guys, my name is Frankie Power. I'm the ED Duke Care at University of Louisville Hospital. I'm Ashley, I'm one of the trauma resource nurses here at the hospital. And I'm Dr. Ludwig with the Trauma ICE team. We're here today to talk about DPL or Diagnostic Predominial Lavage. Uh, we're going to talk about the contraindications, indications, uh, equipment, and patient preparation. So the Diagnostic Peritoneal Lavage is something that we use to assess the uh, hypotensive patient. We use it when we're trying to determine whether there's blood in the abdominal cavity or any other sort of intra-abdominal injury. Commonly we use the FAST scan, we use the ultrasound, but when you have a patient who is uh, morbidly obese or you have difficulty getting windows for any number of reasons, this is a fallback option that, that we can use to assess the abdominal cavity in a rapid manner when we are, the patient is too unstable to move to the CT scanner. Some contraindications to diagnostic peritoneal lavage include uh, patients who are pregnant in the advanced stage of pregnancy where the uterus may be uh, in the way, uh, cirrhosis where you have ascites that can be a uh, relative contraindication, and then in the setting of pelvic fractures, uh, it's not a contraindication, but it, rather it changes whether you do it above or below the belly button. For training purposes, today we have a 27-year-old female that was involved in an MVC. She was the driver and unrestrained, ejected from her car. On the way to the hospital, EMS reported that her blood pressure was in the 60s. Here in the ED, she has received four units of PRVCs, four of FFP, and two liters of crystalloid. She remains hypotensive. Her uh, initial fast was negative and the doctor is requesting to do a DPL. Now to where the equipment is. Every bay has all the trays already set up. The first thing that the surgeon needs is his scalpel. We'll hand that to his physician. The next thing that they need is the minor surgery tray, which is located in bed 32. And then don't forget the DPL bucket, the DPL tray, and your warm crystalloids. Now that we've gathered our equipment, there are a couple things not to forget. Don't forget the OG and the pulley. OG has been placed. Pulley has been placed. With the foley and OG in place, the bladder and the stomach can now be decompressed and we can proceed with the DPO. Usually we do a splash prep of betadine to prepare the abdomen, uh, and then we make our incision. We have our minor surgery tray here, which has retractors and some tools that are going to uh, assist in getting access to the abdomen, and then the DPL tray which has our DPL catheter. Once we've made it down to the abdomen, we're going to take our DPL catheter and we're going to uh, advance it down towards the pelvis. Now, during this time, the nurse should be priming the IV tubing uh, in case our first, uh, the first aspirate doesn't come back grossly positive. Now the first, once the DPL catheter is in, you, you aspirate and you look for gross blood, bile, or stool contamination. If you don't get anything back, that's when you take the IV tubing and you start infusing the IV fluids into the DPL catheter. The IV fluid is, is instilled through the, through the tubing and then uh, once the, the, all the fluid is in, you then drop the IV fluid back down to the table, or down to the floor, the fluid runs out, and then you can uh, look at that fluid to determine whether it's positive or not. Sometimes, in the interest of time, you can simply remove the line and aspirate back the fluid and see what you get through the, uh, from an aspiration. Unique to our institution, our IV tubing has a one-way valve. That needs to cut above the filter to allow for the fluid to drain back into our bucket for blood sampling. At this point, uh, if the DPL is positive, then the decision has been made and you will likely proceed to the operating room. If it's negative, further evaluation may be necessary. Some final things to remember uh, when you're going to do a DPL decompressing the stomach and the bladder before getting started, and then when the decision has been made to do a DPL, the instruments that you're going to need are not just the DPL tray, but also the minor surgery tray and the DPL bucket.
Thanks for watching this episode of Quick Tips. As always, if you have any questions, please, we're here to help.